about uh, off-target movement or unintended effects from that application, the first thing that comes to mind is damage. Uh, when we think about uh, potential damage, uh, it's really going to be specific to the chemistry we're applying. Uh, over the last couple years, we've had lots of focus on dicamba and the growth regulator herbicides in, in uh, more generality. Those particular chemistries are going to cause uh, cupping, uh, crinkling, uh, twisting. Uh, uh, they may cause curling or things like that. So uh, it, when we think about the damage there, that's going to be quite different than uh, the damage from Roundup. So if I'm out there uh, spraying uh, around the garden trying to clean up some weeds with some Roundup, uh, the damage I might see there is going to look very different from that. Uh, we might see uh, necrosis. We might see uh, some, some leaves starting to die, uh, turning brown. Uh, so every chemistry has got a little bit different signature. Uh, and every chemical group has a little bit different signature in terms of the damage we see. Keep in mind when you're evaluating damage too, uh, damage is a function of the dose or the exposure uh, to that chemistry. So when we look at the different chemicals, uh, uh, some uh, chemicals at very, very small doses will cause a, a visual response where uh, other chemistries, it takes a, a larger dose before we see that uh, damage start to kick in. So uh, uh, with some chemistries, we've got to be much, much more careful about where and how we're applying those uh, around sensitive areas than other chemistries because of the, the potential risk for damage that might occur. The other thing that we want to do is look for every opportunity to manage that pest uh, uh, from ways other than chemical means. So uh, this may mean bringing in uh, things such as tillage, uh, uh, crop rotation, or even uh, uh, mechanical means uh, such as uh, hoeing or uh, uh, manual uh, eradication of weeds or other pests to, when the opportunity presents itself. Now keep in mind that uh, every pest we're dealing with may be a little bit different. So uh, uh, obviously uh, when we talk about hoeing weeds out, uh, that's, that same technique is not going to be very effective when we talk about disease control or, or uh, insect control uh, uh, necessarily. So. Uh, but when we talk about uh, putting this together as a system, it's really bringing all the tools that we have in the toolbox together and using them all in different uh, orders and rotations to make sure those products last as long as possible. Uh, the things I want to think about uh, in terms of uh, either making an application or being around somebody that might be making an application for next year, uh, first off, uh, read and follow the label. Uh, before. Uh, uh, we make any pesticide application, it's uh, critical to understand the components of that label. Uh, beyond that, though, we really want to start to think about the environmental conditions in which we're making that application. Uh, again, uh, coming back to that wind speed and wind direction being the, the real critical uh, juncture in terms of how much uh, uh, off-target movement I might get from that application. Uh, the next thing I want to think about is what might be around me. So investigating those sensitive areas, understanding uh, the potential risks uh, if I do get uh, off-target movement, what might be damaged uh, uh, or what might be uh, uh, impacted uh, from that pesticide application. Uh, the third thing is really thinking about uh, how do I manage that application from uh, uh, a droplet size standpoint and that comes back to the nozzles and, and the products that I'm running through that tank. So looking at how can I make uh, uh, or create as large a droplets as possible to minimize that off-target movement, but yet making sure I've got sufficient coverage to get that pesticide to work the way it needs to.